were only about this big. But I gotta tell you, Jurassic Park missed a huge opportunity because Dilophosauruses were actually very large. Dilophosaurus was 20 feet long. That's the same size as a pickup truck. Not the little green Ricky Dink dinosaur that was sort of hopping in the bushes. He was a big dinosaur. He actually paved the way. Not quite as big as Tyrannosaurus Rex, but he paved the way for Ceratosaurus, Allosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus Rex. So he was actually the first of the big meat-eating dinosaurs. The other ones were really kind of small, like Eoraptor and Herarosaurus. Nothing like Dilophosaurus had shown up. So that was actually something that Jurassic Park missed. It was a blown opportunity. So unfortunately what they did is they went the whole thing with the sail and the spinning. Here's the problem. For an animal to have a sail around his neck, you actually need a set of bones that come from the neck and support the frill, kind of like a tent. Dilophosaurus did not have those bones, and he didn't even have a point in his skull for those bones to be there. So unfortunately, Dilophosaurus didn't have a sail. And spitting venom, like that, you actually need holes and pockets in your jaws to keep the venom sacs. They're like little bags that hold the venom to allow it to spit. Dilophosaurus didn't have those either. So unfortunately, Dilophosaurus wasn't a spitter, he didn't have a sail, and he did not, well, he was very large. So you gotta kinda give credit for that. But speaking of big dinosaurs, there was another big dinosaur that made its debut in Jurassic Park and it took people's imaginations by storm. I'll never forget when Alan Grant first introduced this dinosaur. It was awesome, he is out in force today and he slashes at you with this six inch retractable claw, like a razor on the middle toe. He doesn't bother to bite your jugular like a lion. No, no. He slashes at you here or here or maybe across the belly, spilling your intestines. But the point is, you are alive when they start to eat you. You guys know what dinosaur this was? Yeah, very close. It is a Velociraptor. Velociraptors took the world by storm. Now we have these gigundo, six foot tall, nine foot long dinosaurs with big toe claws that can shred and rip apart creatures, out thinking hunters, clever girl, being able to outsmart guys and being really, really large. Well, uh, here's the problem. This is a Velociraptor claw. And that is a Velociraptor head. What do you say, boy? How does that work? Let me explain. When Steven Spielberg was making the movie Jurassic Park, he got a phone call from a group of paleontologists who said, Hey, Steve. Ow. Hey, Steven, we just discovered a brand new dinosaur. You might want to put it in your movie. And Steven Spielberg said, okay, why don't you tell me a little bit about it? And they said, well, it was probably related to Velociraptor. It's probably about 8 to 10 feet tall, 15 feet long, really gigundo-sized toe claws, probably using for disemboweling or hunting. And this was probably a very smart animal. And Steven Spielberg said, okay, got it. Here's the problem. They didn't have a name for this dinosaur. So instead, what they did was, he called it what it was named in the book, which is Velociraptor. Now we know this dinosaur as Utah Raptor. Can you guys say that? Utah Raptor. Utah Raptor. Pop quiz, where do you think we find Utah Raptors? <laughs> Close, we find them in Utah. And yes, they were eight to 10 feet tall, 16 feet long, big claws on their toes, but were they smart? Here's the problem. We can't give dinosaurs IQ tests. We can't give them balancing tests. But what we can do is we can measure the size of their brains and compare them to the size of their bodies. In general, big brains, small bodies means you're very smart. I mean, look at this. You got a nice big sized head with a nice big sized brain and you're a little bit on the shorter side. You are a very, very smart young man. You're a very, very smart young man. And raptors had the same thing. They had big brains, small bodies. So they were just as smart as cats and dogs. And we know that wild dogs are able to coordinate their attacks, they're able to communicate with each other, they're able to fend off larger rivals, but could they open doors? Well, we don't find any fossilized doors from the time of the dinosaurs, so we don't know for certain, but we can say, go onto YouTube, Look at the videos. You'll find cats and dogs opening up doors and flushing toilets. So as far as I'm concerned, raptors, if they were smart as cats and dogs, they could probably do it too. Now I do feel bad that I couldn't show you guys a big raptor. You guys want to see a big raptor? Yeah? 
Okay, let's go see the big raptor over here. Yes, big raptor's here. This is awesome. Check this guy this is actually, this is a big raptor. This is actually the first raptor that we ever found. It's called Deinonychus. Can you guys say that? Deinonychus, very good. And that name Deinonychus means terrible claw because of that toe claw sickle shaped on its foot. And we had these dreams and these visions of this raptor going up to prey items and going karate kid style, putting up their toe claws and going, yeah, yeah, yeah shredding open the ball, the stomachs of their prey and spilling out blood and guts and all kinds of gory, disgusting sort of images. But let's think realistically for a second. When you guys are at home, when your moms or your dads or everybody's eating dinner, if you want to cut something, you want to cut like a hot dog or a piece of meat or something, what do you use to cut it? No, you don't use a dinosaur. What do you cut a hot dog with? You use a knife, very good. Now, a knife, when you look at a knife, is it straight or is it curved? It's straight, very good. So sharp and straight things are very good for cutting. Is a raptor claw straight? No. This is not for cutting. This is for grabbing. So this toe claw is actually used as a hook. So what we think that the raptors would actually do is they would get down really low in a group, maybe of about three or four other raptors, and then leap and run at full speed, jump into the air as high as they possibly can, jab their toe claw into the prey, and now they're locked in. They can't move. So now they pull out their hand claws Wolverine style and start shredding at the prey with their with their hands and then biting them with their teeth. So shredding, biting, shredding, shred, biting, shred. So, Raptors may not necessarily have been as big. Velociraptors may not have been as big as what you see in Jurassic Park, but Deinonychus, Utah Raptor, and Velociraptors were very, very, very dangerous. Now, something else about Jurassic Park to bring up. Lots of people now look at these animals and they think they're all dinosaurs. Just because they all lived in the time of the dinosaurs doesn't make them a dinosaur. Come on over this one. I'm definitely enjoying this moment. Uh, so, to talk about... That's <laughs> uh, okay. So, to talk about this next animal, I actually want to use a quote from my favorite superhero of all time, Superman. Look, up in the sky, what do you see? A Ooh, very, very close. You're very, very close. It's a pteranodon. Can you say that? Pteranodon. And pteranodons are not dinosaurs. They lived with dinosaurs, but they weren't dinosaurs because, not because of the fact that they fly. Dinosaurs do fly, but it's actually because of the way these guys walked. Because dinosaurs walk like you and I do. They actually walk with their legs underneath their bodies. So when they walk or they run, they're very fast and they're very agile. Pteranodons are different. Pteranodons walk like reptiles. They walk with their legs spread out to the sides of their body. So when they walk, they actually walk like this. Give it a try. See if you can do it. Can you walk like this? That's how a pteranodon walks. That's not how a dinosaur walks. So this is not a dinosaur walk. This is a pteranodon walk. And on top of that, when a pteranodon flies, it doesn't fly like a dinosaur does. Because yes, dinosaurs fly. We just don't call them dinosaurs, we call them birds. When a bird flies, it swoops its arms up and down and moves its wrists up and down. Pteranodons fly on their pinky fingers. What they do instead is they stick out their pinky fingers, their long pinky fingers, out, they climb up to the tops of cliffs, and they glide. These guys were gliders that would glide over the water searching for food. So guys, spread out your legs like a pteranodon, stick out your pinky fingers like a pteranodon, and try to glide. Glide over the oceans looking for food, looking for fish. Glide over the oceans looking for fish. <laughs> nice job, guys. It's tricky, but that's what pteranodons would do. And pteranodons are not dinosaurs because of it. Now, as they flew over the oceans, they had to deal with some nasty, nasty animals that aren't quite T-Rex, but are the T-Rexes of the ocean. Come this way. Not a Stegosaurus. Come this way. No, not like a chicken. Definitely no chicken.